Hey folks, Engineer775 here. I'm back. I've taken a quite a long break from YouTube, it seems, and just kind of, I don't know, just had to take a break from it, and I'm back. <laughs> I do have a lot of content that I need to get um, formatted and put up here, and uh, so for my faithful subscribers, I apologize for that. I've just uh, took a break. I also saw some, a lot of my videos being demonetized, and for what reason, I don't know. Um, so I just said, you know what? I'm going to do something else. So anyway, YouTube's a great social media platform. So I just, uh, I'm over myself and I'm back. So <laughs> hope you're all doing well. What do I have here on the table? Something um, just wanted to share with you. A lot of times, by the time these things get installed, they're, you know, down five, three, 500 feet down in the well and uh, you don't get to see them. So I wanted to talk to you about some solutions that are very handy, very helpful in uh, the world of preparedness and possibly um, just having options on the farm, on your homestead, whatever you want to call it, in your off-grid situation maybe. This could be helpful at your Montana mountain cabin. So the first pump here that I have is the is the Grunfoss SQ series. It is um, a it's a very small pump. What I love about these pumps is that you can add them to your existing wells. In most cases, it's only it's a less than three three inch diameter pump. Um, and what I have here is an SQ series and an SQ Flex, and I'll go into a little bit about that. So I'm about to put this pump in a spring. And there'll be a video on that whole project. As we do more and more projects, we get into more and more complete infrastructure projects. What do I mean by that? Everything from um, water sources, pumping from water, sources like wells and springs, rain catchment systems to a home, uh, providing the hot water solution, whether it's propane, sun bandit, uh, direct drive elements, diversion loads, blah, blah, blah. A lot of options there. And then heating and cooling, refrigeration, lighting. We're getting into it all. Solar is, again, the hub uh, for producing the power, but we're adding wind and hydro on as well when we can do that. But our go-to is solar to power these things. And when it comes to that, um, on small systems, the neat thing about this, you can get this pump in a 120 volt or 115 volt version, and it will pump 10 gallons a minute. It's a half horsepower pump. The beautiful, let me just tell you a few things. You can't see any of these cool things I'm telling you about, but I can talk to you about them. This won't really stay stand up there without falling down. Um, it is a soft start pump meaning it's not gonna have that surge that most well pumps have. It starts at zero, it ramps up, and it hits its max power within two seconds. So it's not, it's a, it's a pretty fast ramp up, but it's not a hammer. And so that's very forgiving to your inverter. So if you have a, you know, 115 volt inverter, and you haven't invested in a, you know, a larger split phase inverter, like an Outback, Radian or Magnum PAE or a Schneider Electric. This pump is an, an awesome solution for those cheaper inverters. Yes, it will run on modified sign. I'm kind of a little bit nervous to say that, but it will. Um, I just, if you can, pay a little bit extra and get a pure sine wave inverter. And this pump has a capacity capability of, of over 200 feet total dynamic head. So in most shallow wells, springs, cisterns, you can have a nice 30, 50 pressure switch put on your, um, your system, and, and this pump works great. Um, it does have low water protection built in, so if you run dry, it will actually shut itself down. Um, I, I do put some fail safes in there, and I want to show you that. So just a couple of backup things that I do. Even though most pumps come with... An internal check valve. I like these Simmons SBAs. Um, these pumps are all have inch and a quarter um, input output threaded NPT output. So this this valve will transition me back to one inch 
because I really don't need an uh, inch and a quarter and it's cumbersome in some situations. So I'm going to actually put this, I don't know if we can see it, I'm going to scrape up the table really nicely here. Okay, nobody's here and get away with this. All right, so um, you can put the, so I just like to have that extra check valve. So now I have, if I do that, I've got two check valves. This one I've added, I can, it's already stepped down to one inch and away I go, plumbing it to the house. So soft start, dry run protection, double check valve, and I like to add, let's see these, these are very inexpensive dry run protection here. This is probably the most inexpensive solution for dry run protection, um, even cheaper than some float switches. So what is this? This is the, this is the Square D or Schneider Electric, because Schneider bought out all these guys. Let me uh, let me kind of show you this. It's hard to see when it's on the bladder tank. Uh, we don't, ah, those are extra parts. We don't need them. So if you can see this little arm here, and on the side of the switch, it'll say um, start auto, and um, it tells you basically how to how to run this thing. So what am I talking about? Say your water source runs dry, you've out pumped your spring, your cistern, whatever it is, the, this switch will actually open up. It'll open the contacts up to stop, um, just to break, this is a switch, it'll break the continuity between your breaker and the pump so that you don't burn up the pump. Even though the pump has dry run protection, I add these. These are, you know, a $20 solution. And what you do when the contacts are open, um, just say that you've pumped the cistern dry, you left the faucet on, you got a broken frozen pipe, whatever, and the pump's running away. This thing, after it un out pumps the water, it the pressure drops off and the contacts open and the pump shuts off and that protects it. But in order to start back up and once the water's recovered and you've fixed your leak, you gotta take this lever and push it forward to the contacts close. And you need to hold it there until the pressure, I think it's over 20 PSI has been reached and then they'll stay closed and then they'll stay closed, okay? So you gotta hit them, let it get over 20 PSI and it'll stay closed and keep running and act like a normal pressure switch. But this is a great $20 solution to put on there. Some people find it aggravating. If you have a system where you're running out of water a lot, you do have to go downstairs and, or wherever your bladder tank is and close this contact and start it up. But it's a lot better to have that as your fail safe than to have to replace that pump. In some situations that can be really aggravating. So just wanted to share that with you, okay? And it's a square D pressure switch with the low, low pressure shut off as a redundancy to the low at uh, the dry run capabilities of the pump okay so a lot of capabilities in this pump it does a lot and um, that we have them on our website and or you can call me i can help you i can ship these pumps anywhere in the country and i'll give you a really good price this has just been my go-to and if this pump if the well water is very deep and i cannot meet the demands based on the, the 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 pressure requirement with this pump then i'll switch over to the to my acdc pump the ground Foss flex series there are 11 of these this is an 11 sqf2 there's different sizes different models and they're all the same cost so if you need to pump water from this pump right here will pump from 840 feet down and oh no the six point the six sqf3 will pump from 840 feet static at five gallons a minute with solar, no batteries, it's awesome. So, and there's all sorts of transfer switches and generators and controls for the flex pump. This is just installed like a regular well pump. And um, the only other thing I wanna add, sometimes depending on the water source, Grunfoss recommends putting the pump in a sleeve. So here we have, just putting it in a piece of, uh, it's nice to have a table that's a work, doubles as a workbench. Um, having the water come through, sucking the water through this PVC pipe, it forces water over the motor in a way that keeps the motor cooler than if it's just sitting in a cistern. The water can get warm around the motor. We want to keep moving the water and that's what that sleeve is for. So that just makes um, a little bit more protection. What I'm going to install it in is a very cold mountain spring. I'm not worried about it. Plus there's not, a, it's not going to be running a lot. So. 
Just wanted to talk to you about that. These, and then I don't have the hand pump here, but a lot of times we'll put in the hand pump along with one of these other pumps as kind of my favorite combination. A lot of backups, a lot of redundancies. And I think it's important, it doesn't cost a lot of money to put in these fail safes. Extra check valves, extra dry run protection, and these fail safes will make your life a lot easier than having to replace the pump. Not many people want to pull pumps out of wells or springs or cisterns because there's been a, a failure and the failure can be as simple as somebody left the spigot on to the blueberries and it, they drained the cistern the pump's just pumping away burning itself up and so we want to make sure we don't do that so i hope that helps good to be back and if you've got any questions let me know if you need pumps let me know if you need tanks we're having fun designing and installing systems we're continually uh, gaining a lot of knowledge and uh, kind of cross training with gain solar we got an awesome electrician good grader again we've just been pumping out the projects and just haven't been filming them all for you i have filmed them i haven't posted them so a lot more info to come and um i guess that's it so grunfoss has been my go-to on um, off-grid solar water pumping whether it's for a farm or a home or a homestead or a cabin up in the mountains uh, pretty much can cover any water uh, issue unless you go beyond 840 foot static not the depth of the well the well can go thousands of feet um, but the static water level i just did put that pump in a 1400 foot well but the static water level was 20 feet from the surface so um that's a different ball game there all right folks enough of me blabbering away about pumps if i can help you get one this might help you and again this pump is a great i didn't fail to mention that this pump both of them actually run great off of small inverter generators um, like the Honda, the Honda uh, 2000 EUs or the standard. Even the new, a lot of people are raving about all this Harbor Freight Predator inverters, um, inverter generators. They, they run no problem. The Yamaha, the uh, Northern, um, the standard is Honda, but I keep preaching that. I don't make any money off of Honda. I should. But anyhow, these things run fantastic. So if you don't have any water, but you have a small generator, you can run them. And um, on the bigger pump, it'll run 115 or 230 volt. It doesn't care what you throw at it. That's the beauty of the beast. And I'll just say 90 to 265 volts AC, 30 to 300 volts DC. That's your ranges on that. The thing just seemingly just pumps five gallons a minute, no matter what you throw at it. So cool stuff. I hope it's cool to you. And if you need help designing a water system, it's what I love to do and send you a whole package. And I uh, love to hear the stories of people that have installed this stuff and um, just got one back from Utah where they pump. They're the only ones that have water on a mountain and they use some of our equipment and are very excited about um, helping people that way. So give me a call, send me an email, subscribe, like, you know the drill. All right. Take care, y'all. It's Engineer 775, signing out.